No one expects to be hit with a one in 100 year flood. Go, watch your feet. Cyclone Gabrielle is the most significant weather event New Zealand has seen this century. The severity and the breadth of the, dem the damage that we are seeing has not been experienced in a generation. This morning we declared a national emergency for only the third time in our history. So in their first week um, there was also gang members hanging around and save with guns, not letting opposing gang members sort of come around and get help, food. Up here is where she broke through the ceiling and put a stool here with, on top of a table and got our kids up through the roof up there. Fortunately, it wasn't a, a screw down iron roof, so she's gone up the top there and sat on the roof and waited for seven hours up on top of the roof. Yo, it's your boy Dave here and this is The Fallon Show. Hope all is going well out there. God bless you all. Um, today we're in Hawke's Bay. So we're in the Hawke's Bay Hastings region of uh, New Zealand today. Um, so for those that don't know, well, for those that don't know, over since the beginning of the year or even the end of last year for the last couple months, um, New Zealand's just been getting hit by weather event after weather event. There's been tornadoes and then um, flooding and flash flooding all over the place. And um, then Cyclone Gabriel and then all these earthquakes now. And so uh, I'm just come to um, connect with uh, Man Up, who is a group that's been doing a lot of uh, mahi down, he uh, down here with the cleanup and the rebuild and all of that. It's, it's going to take, take a long time for, um, for the people of Hastings to get back on their feet. The damage is pretty bad, but we're here hooking up. Um, I've got my friend Joe, who's going to take me around, and also uh, Pastor Mike. So uh, Michael with Man Up, um, he's the main man down here. Um, he's a local, he's from the area. Um, he's been organizing a lot. I hear them all creep, child of God lose no sleep. Nah, cause them be the ones that gather like wolves. Be the same ones that scatter like sheep. Firm in the word, we do not retreat. They all hit it cause it cuts like a razor. <laughs> My name is Jo Sell um, and we are here in Estelle working on I believe to be the 68th house that we've worked on um, while being a part of the Man Up Relief Army here in the Hawke's Bay. Um, for those of you who don't know, obviously Cyclone Gabriel came through um, and caused absolute havoc on the region. And for me myself personally, I don't feel like it's been done justice um, showcasing or showing everyone what's actually happened here and what the need is here too. So yeah, in the background, I think we've got a crew of about 30 people uh, that are clearing out the house, um, getting rid of the silt, getting rid of the rubbish, um, just to help obviously ease the worries of the owners as well. Um, one thing I do want to add is that everything that we do, we don't get a dollar from the government. So these are all volunteers, all people who have sacrificed their time, um, their jobs, their money, all that sort of thing just to come down here and serve so yeah as you can see in real life I'm not taller than a washing line I think the silt looks like it's about over at least a meter and a half maybe close to two meters high and it's everywhere like there's a car over there where you can't even see the roof um, so this is the Hukarere uh, Girls College. It quickly turned into a point of being evacuated. So um, from my memory, the girls had to be, and all the people that were here, had to be airlifted out. Uh, so about five days ago, we were here. Um, we were helping the church with the cleanup. So the inside of the church was um, already cleared out, but there was a lot of rubbish in particular in that building over there. Um, so come this way. So we came through, um, we pulled out all the rubbish. Uh, we also got all the silt out and um, took some of the jib out. So the silt, I think it was probably uh, just under the knee. Um, and it was, yeah, it was very messy. So they've said that there's 11 confirmed deaths, but that's because the people have been identified and um, claimed by family or friends. So that's what we've been told, um, but yeah, if you talk to the community in general, uh, the, the picture's a lot different. The picture is a lot different. Um, they're, they're claiming that there's probably about eight or so people still missing, um, but we're speaking to communities that say that there's still hundreds missing. 
So, yeah, that's the stats at the moment. What happened to that house back there? Um, so that house back there, uh, I believe that's the property that got taken off its foundation um, and pushed down the valley by about maybe two, three kilometers. I mean, there's a lot of people, um, there are a lot of people who just don't want the help because uh, it's too overwhelming. Which, I mean, to be honest with you, I'm not surprised. Some people deal with like the trauma in different ways. Um, a lot of people are like ashamed of their homes. As you can see here, fam, is just complete devastation. Obviously, it's a bit hard to get the locals to speak on camera because, um, you know, a lot of these people have just lost everything. Some people aren't in the mood to be on camera and things like that. So, But they're definitely on board with um, getting this out there to the public, you know what I mean, of what's going on. But as you can probably tell, you know, just a lot of people have just lost everything and all these orchards and things like that. So a lot of people just aren't in the mood. So they're still just processing um, everything that's going on. Um, so at the moment we're down at Napier, down the waterfront, um, and behind me is a whole bunch of slash that's being um, cleaned or tidied up. Uh, just for reference's sake, in 2017 the Greens passed the law uh, where you weren't allowed to do burn-ups anymore, so when it came to slash you had to leave it to rot. And so hence why a lot of that slash came from the mountains and got washed down here. And that's what caused a lot of the damage as well, um, was stuff like this, and it's littered all across the all across the beach. Okay, so this is um, the Tutaikuri River, um, and it actually goes. I think it's Nar Naruroro and Tutaikuri rivers meet up, and so that bridge got taken out by the obviously by the force of the water where the two rivers meet. And from talking with the locals, uh, the slash is responsible for a lot of it. So what was happening to a lot of the bridges that have been destroyed is that the slash was building up and basically turning these bridges into dams. And then because of the force of the water, um, they just got, yeah, the train tracks turned into spaghetti and concrete, thick concrete bridges were just broken. Uh, I came down, I believe it was on the 22nd of February um, and so far I've been here for 16 days. Today's my 16th day. So all those houses that have been buried, they've got to clean it up themselves? Yeah, unless they uh, fall within what the council requirements are, so... <clears throat> which I don't think it'll be easy, to be honest with you, but like, houses that have been... Um, Hit by the hit by the flood. Not all of them are rural, so and a lot of these people are older. Um, we have a lot of elderly that are asking for help. Are you trying to tell me that you expect the 82-year-old to go out and try and remove the silt from their home by themselves? Like, it's ridiculous. So we're at 503 uh, Railway Road, which is the Hastings Sports Centre aka the HQ for Man Up Relief Efforts or Army. So if you need somewhere to stay, then this is the place. This was actually originally an evacuation center, uh, but then when we came through, they changed it into our headquarters for us. This is our briefing area. Um, we also have church here on Sunday. We have Apostles Academy in here as well on a Monday. And if you look over here, this is our storehouse. This is only like less than half of it. So we have a lot of donations off-site as well, um, but this is all the stuff that goes out to the community. We have heaps of packs, food packs. But we have lots of people coming in that still haven't eaten properly for like since the cyclone, um, and communities that have been isolated where the stuff that we get to them is the only way they're getting to eat. Um, some of our crews gone back to their homes to do a reset, um, and they'll be back in a couple of days because a lot of them were here for like two weeks straight. So they've gone home to put their orders in affair. Oh, affairs in order, sorry. <laughs> and then they're coming back. 
I'll see you some of these outside and you can speak louder than that. I pray for our lips and our lips. Father, we thank you for today, Lord, we'll just give you the glory. Pray for the team that are here and those that have arrived. Thank you, Father, for their protection. Pray, Lord, that as they go out there, sing, laugh, um, be a shoulder for others to cry on or whatever they're doing, that, Lord, they'll uh, be just fully immersed in faith, hope, and love. In the beautiful name of Jesus, amen. Amen. High five your neighbor and have a seat. Michael Ngauka, um, Ngāti Kāunganu, um, Ngāti Ranginui, uh, married, beautiful wife, Jewel Ngāhuka, and we have five beautiful children. Uh, look, where are we at right now? We're here in the Hastings Indoor Sports Centre. It's become our Man Up Relief HQ base of operations, really, our headquarters. And so that's where we're um, providing some of the stuff to some of the local families that have been uh, hurt by the cyclone. And these chairs here, uh, this is where we do our 8 a.m. briefs in the morning. We just do the health and safety checks. We also do meetings at night as well. Um, but that's sort of the facility here. So when we're on site, probably the biggest thing is the sensitivity to a lot of the people's houses that we're working in. So a lot of them, as we know, have been damaged. There's a lot of personal, a lot of emotional connection to their fuddies and stuff like that. So we don't want to be doing lives. We don't want to be in there taking photos and without the permission. Um, so it's very important that if, we, if we've got those types of that type of damage, just don't just chuck it in the mud. Yeah. That thing needs to be um, removed right out onto site into those into those rubbish bins. So we're not going anywhere near those. Okay. Job uh, coordinating everything but doing nothing. That's my job, you know, self appointed. I'm self appointed, that's a very important <laughs> uh, position. Um, no, I handle logistics. Here we have a team at the front. If you haven't signed in, can you just let them know that you're here, how long you're going to be staying for? I'm from the area, born and raised here. I'm local. I actually reside in Napier, uh, Miani. It's a rural community. That part of it was hugely hit by the cyclone, and fortunately, our house, the water went around it. And flooded out some of the hood but anyway um, when it happened I was up early I quickly jumped on Facebook because I wanted to get an update on what's going on and I saw my mate around 5 a.m. my mate a good brother of mine Daz he lives right in the middle of the S Valley area he was on the roof taking a selfie video livey I should say last I think 8% pleading out for help as him and his four children or the four young ones that were with him were on the roof they had a boat tied to the gutter because the water was already up to the gutter level, just under it. And so um, when I saw that, I knew like, man, I need to get my A into G and get my family sorted. We were kind of um, temporary, you know, roughly sorted, but I quickly jumped up, told my wife, hey, look, look at this, we need to get, you know, we need to get out of here. Um, so we loaded up the trailer, put my generator on there, uh, my radio, we already had some of our camping gear half packed. I uh, got my mum, our four children, and my mother-in-law, and we went over to the evac centre over in Taradao, the St. Joe's Māori Girls College. And when I got there, there was literally 200 elderly people. Uh, we had the rest homes were evacuated there. There was a, also a dementia, I think, a unit of dementia uh, patients. They had to be locked in a room because they kept, you know, taking off and forgetting where they are from. And so it was quite sad. Uh, it was surreal. And, um, yeah, that was my experience just, those first, just, just that first day. I was in Napier and then I, I, I moved my family to Hastings when they opened up the bridges because Napier had no power and no internet. Um, um, I touched base with Brian Tamaki, Apostle Brian Tamaki, and let him know that um, from the ground what's going on. Uh, he put a call out, uh, you know, he put a call out and uh, 250 uh, volunteers came. He put a call out at church that Sunday and 250 volunteers came on Monday, Tuesday. The big call really was for hands, on the gr hands and feet on the ground. So we've got shovels, we've got digger operators, um, all sorts. And so that's sort of the big mahi that we've been doing out there. I sort of would like to give a shout out to as many people that you know, get them down here and give us a hand. But yeah, uh, I've been through floods myself and uh, it's a very trying time. So keep on mucking in. So I was in Kerikeri um, for the cyclone and, you know, when we got the power back on and saw what was happening down here, I just, I really had a heart to come down. Um, I've been through the earthquakes in Christchurch, Kaikoura, and also the mosque shootings. So I, you know, I, I have a heart for what people are going through. Well, we're in need of more boots on the ground, really. Um, hey, if you've got a digger, bring it along. We're, every day, guys show up with diggers. 
this guy two days ago showed up with two diggers. The guy yesterday showed up with another two diggers. I remember a story from two days ago, yesterday actually. There was a lady. <clears throat> She's uh, 68, 68 or 67. And um, her house was badly hit. Now she, her husband had a stroke during the flood. So he was half in and out, kind of semi-paralyzed, you know, there but not there. And so she had to stand on top of the kitchen island and hold him up above the water from 11 p.m. to 2 p.m. the next day. And um, that's, yeah, traumatic. And so we were there helping her clean up that, that part of the house. And that was the first time that she had been back. And so me and my wife, we got to share that special moment with her and just support her, afi her, have a karakia, that sort of stuff. Oh, in Napier, there was a sense of fear um, because over there had no power and no um, communication. There's only certain areas in Napier where you could get reception, but otherwise, if you didn't have power, you know, you couldn't, you didn't know what was going on. It's unexplainable. The amount of silt is up this high. There's cars with logs on top. Um, I went up Esk Valley where we were working yesterday, up further, and saw a bridge that had this log. It's huge, great big log. It's big, bigger, bigger than a ute, jammed up under the bridge. Um, it obviously washed out the other side of the bridge and cleared itself. What I'm thinking is these rushes of water that's come from up the valleys, there's all these bridges failing at different stages because they've got all this forestry waste around. It's, it's not slash, there's huge logs there. There's logs that could be milled, chipped or whatever. But that should be happening out in the bush. None of this stuff should be left behind. Oh, mate. Well, in the first week um, at St. Joe's, we put a security, some of my guys in security, the man-up crew, uh, some of them are trained in that because uh, there were some guys hanging around trying to take the generators. So in their first week, um, there was also gang members hanging around a pack and save with guns, not letting opposing gang members sort of come around and get help, food. Uh, there are stories that I know through other friends of gang members taking generators from fuel stations. Um, in that second week, because again, I have a construction business, one of my um, suppliers is Carter's in Napier, midday, a bunch of armed gang members went through there and took all the power tools just before my workers showed up. It was probably a good thing because a few of my workers are MMA fighters, but anyway, that's, that's not the point. Um, <clears throat> yeah, my opinion on the looting, look, man, people are down. No need to do that stuff. You're kicking someone in the teeth when they're already on the ground. Uh, so the address here um, is 503 Railway Road, um, Hastings. That's the Hastings Indoor Sports Centre. We've got it for this week. I'm in a meeting um, today to see what the future looks like. Or check out the Man Up Hawke's Bay Facebook page or the Man Up New Zealand Facebook page. Or ring the 0800 One Man Up number. Here today with the rest of the whanau who come to support the kaupapa and the... Uh, What I'll do, I'm going to get my wife to pray because we want to close and seal this part. Muster up and then we're out. Car pie and you can share. Okay, let's stand, eh? We'll stand. Cool, Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful team. Thank you, Lord, for their hearts. We thank you, Lord, for the people in Hawke's Bay. How many boots have we got on the ground today? Uh, 50, I think. It's 50, 50, 50 boots. Um, especially to help with Cyclone Gabriel. It got picked up and floated from somewhere. That's a so that's another house that just yeah. got randomly displaced. He should be here. Hey, uh, I'm Brian Nisbet, and I own this uh, family orchard here, five hectares. So this was the beautiful lounge, and up here is where she broke through the ceiling and put a stool here with on top of a table and got her kids up through the roof up there. Fortunately, it wasn't a, a screw down iron roof, so she's gone up the top there and sat on the roof and waited for seven hours up on top of the roof. And then she waited till the, till the river receded and then crossed over, you know, walked about a couple of K over to another orchard, over to another road, and found a house high up and went up and, there, and, and stayed with them for a couple of days and then got rescued by helicopter. You can see the, um, the line of the water there up to that wire where all that silt is and where all that weeds and that are. So that's how high the river was, was in here. 
So none, none of this looked like this before. There was gardens all the way to here. All the landscapes changed because the diggers have had to pull stuff out and whatnot. Our garage is here. My forklift was underwater. Five, six hundred mils of rain in the ranges, and that's what filled all the rivers and, and uh, you know, created the, the overflow of the rivers. Um, New Zealand, most of apples, most of uh, what New Zealand grows in apples gets exported overseas, so there'll still be plenty of apples in the supermarket. Um, but for crops and veggies and, you know, sweet corn and uh, maize for, you know, for what they use maize for and um, buttercup, squash, onions, beetroot. So there's been a lot of the food chain wiped out. So, you know, already we're worried about, you know, the, the cost of veggies. It's not going to get any better because just supply and demand. There's not going to be, have, we're not going to have that supply, so it will affect the country. We're here in S Valley, right at the beginning where um, probably the most harshest hit area, uh, which is this valley here. And we're just at um, uh, some friends of friends' home at the moment. <clears throat> and the guys are, <clears throat> as you can see, move, moving silt, clearing out the um, garages. There's like two, three bay garages here. And uh, we're just doing the mahi. So we've done, to date, uh, we've done 114 homes across Hawke's Bay and the East Coast. We've cleared out 114 homes. Um, and that's increasing every day. That's just removing silt, removing rubbish, and um, also taking the jib off some of the walls to a certain height so that the families can have the insurance assessors come there and, and inspect it and check it out. Um, we've done, last week was another 9,000 hours uh, of labor. Um, and so we're just doing a massive amount of value um, through, through the voluntary efforts that everyone's doing. Oh man, my thoughts, just mad respect, mad respect, love, and mihi out to everyone, you know, um, they're out here, they're just, uh, the owners are, you know, every single house we go into, the homeowners are just overwhelmed by the love and the, um, just the, the way the guys are working, Have, you know, they're jamming some music, having a laugh, you've got a digger guy over here, um, he just literally, he's been with us, he's just ready to go, you know, um, and so you're seeing everyday Kiwi blokes, everyday people just mucking, <laughs> it's, awesome. it's actually awesome to see. <clears throat> Yeah. Thanks for that. So yeah, that's the end of the vlog here, fam. Um, so yeah, this is us here in Hawke's Bay. Um, big love to Pastor Mike and um, Joe, who took me around, who took the time to take me around um, while I was down here, and um, you know, man up and that. Much love to them. Um, yeah, just well, you know, obviously they just need as many boots on the ground down here as um, as possible. You know, so um, if anyone can, um, you know, get down here or if you want to donate or anything like that, then, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, um, there's a lot of people saying um, this and that about some of the groups that are opera operating down here. Uh, man, man Up is one of them, you know, some uh, they've, they've been criticised and things like that. But um, from what I've seen down here, um, man, they're doing such awesome work down here, um, Pastor Mike. Um, really good fella. They're running a tight ship down here. It's very organised, um, and they're just doing what they can um, with what they've got. You know, um, you've seen. You know, they're going out to all of these communities. If these people weren't here, um, all all of those houses that they've cleared, they they'd still be buried in mud if it wasn't for the team and what they're doing here. So yeah. Um, much love to Pastor Mike and Man Up and, and Joe. Yeah, anyway, much love and uh, God bless. It's the following show. The enemy lay not far from me. I hear them all creep. Child of God, lose no sleep. Nah, cause them be the ones that gather like wolves. Be the same ones that scatter like sheep. Firm in the word, we do not retreat. They all hit it cause it cuts like a razor. Whisper the name of the Savior. Enemy flee. Just appear like vapor. Yeah.